There are two types of centre pin reel commonly available. The traditional true pins and centre pins with bearings. The spool of a true pin rotates directly on the pin. There is a grub screw in the hub to adjust the end float of the spool. Whereas centre pins that boast ball bearings have frictionless ball racers, or something similar, inside the spool. The two types of centre pin do behave slightly differently. True pin reels rotate more freely when the reel is held horizontal. This is because the spool is only resting on the grub screw touching the end of the pin, which offers little resistance. With the reel held vertical, the spool is resting on the length of the pin, which offers slightly more resistance to the spool's rotation. The exact opposite happens with bearing type reels. The bearings are most efficient when the reel is in the vertical position. The spools of bearing reels are often, but not always, heavier requiring slightly more force to overcome the inertia of the spool. But once going they are slower to stop which will increase the chance of an overrun. There may be reels with different types of bearings that behave differently but I can only report on what I've seen. Does any of this matter? The differences in performance I've just mentioned are minimal. Either reel is ultimately controlled by your thumb against the edge of the spool, although knowing the characteristics of your reel may help in their use. A centre pin should spin freely, although some reels are fitted with an adjustable drag. This is not a drag used to play the fish against. It is there to slightly reduce the free running of the spool, or perhaps I should say to slow the runaway spinning of a spool. Other features are a ratchet or clicker. The ratchet is not an anti-reverse. The spool will still rotate in either direction with the ratchet engaged, but it does stop the spool rotating unexpectedly. Most ratchets make quite a noise which can disturb other anglers. I use the ratchet for transportation of the reel and very sparingly when fishing. Some reels have a line guide which help to prevent tangles and line wrapping around the back of the reel's foot. Centre pins are easy to choose without a line guide and in time you may find you don't need one. The reel's size is often, but not always, described by the outer diameter of the spool. A 4.5 inch reel with a 1 inch wide spool is, in my view, a good general purpose reel. Fixed spool reels often come with spare spools, allowing the angler to change the line at any time. Spare spools are rarely included with a centre pin and can be difficult to find. If I want to change the line, I will wind the old line back onto an empty line spool and then load new line onto the reel. To attach the line to the spool, lasso the spool with the uni knot or grinner knot or my favourite, the arbor knot. I like to cover the knot with some electrical tape or masking tape to stop the line slipping on the drum and to stop the subsequent layers of line catching on the knot. I only put 50 to 70 yards of line on a centre pin. It is enough for the small rivers I fish. More importantly, the upper layers of line are less likely to bed in, causing problems when long trotting or casting. Heavy line or line designed to sink like feeder line is best avoided if the reel is to be used for trotting a float. I find 3 to 4 pound monofilament is a good general purpose line for trotting. The question of whether to have the line coming off the top or the bottom of the reel I feel is a personal one. There are various opinions as to which is better, but I've always taken the line off the bottom. It just feels more natural to me when winding in and controlling a fish, but in the end it's entirely your choice. As for maintenance of a centre pin, keep the reel clean and from time to time add a drop of light machine oil to the pin. Bearings are often sealed for life and don't need any oil, but please consult your reel's documentation. On either type of reel, the spool can be removed by releasing a catch and lifting the spool off. 
I'm using yellow braid to make it easier for you to see the line in this next section on casting, although there is nothing to stop you using braid on your reel if you prefer. Casting further than 20 yards is more suited to the fixed spool reel. Fortunately most of the time I only need to cast a short distance or fish off the tip of the rod and allow the current to take the float. The easiest cast and the one frequently used is the loop cast. To perform the loop cast pull off some line between the reel and the first rod eye then simply swing out the rig and let go of the loop. To cast a little further, pull line from between the reel and the first eye, and the first and second eye. Swing out the rig, letting go of the first loop, and then the second loop as the rig goes out. I have to say that I don't like just swinging the rig before the release. I don't feel in good control of the tackle. I much prefer to hold the last shot in my free hand allow me to load the rod and have a better control of the cast. Most of the time a loop cast is quite sufficient on the small rivers I fish and I suspect for most of us this is the case. But I will also describe the Wallace cast as I understand it. In the following footage I am using a half ounce weight just to make my life easier when demonstrating but it is an ideal weight to start with when learning the Wallace. The principle of the Wallace cast is simple enough. Lob the tackle out and spin the reel at the same time, but a great deal of practice is required to be able to cast, for example, a 3 AAA float more than about 10 yards. Being in control of the reel is important in the Wallace cast. Hold the reel in a way to allow a finger or thumb to be able to touch the rim of the spool. I prefer to hold the rod in front of the reel, gripping the rod between thumb and fingers, using my little finger to control the spool. Others, I know, prefer to control the reel with their thumb, holding the rod above the reel. Hold the end tackle by the last split shot or the weight in your free hand. Use your thumb to pull off 18 to 20 inches of line from the reel at right angles to the reel. Do not grip the line, just hook your thumb over it. Press the little finger of your rod hand against the spool to lock it. Put a slight bend into the rod. Preloading the rod like this is an important part of the Wallace cast. It helps to fling the tackle out. Underloading the rod will make the cast less efficient. Overloading can cause the tackle to jerk, potentially ruining the cast. I will go through the cast slowly and explain each part as it unfolds. Start the cast by rotating your body towards the target, but without changing the relative position of your hands or letting go of the end tackle. Just rotate a few degrees to get the cast started smoothly. Release the end tackle which will immediately start to move, pulled by the already loaded rod. Continuing the cast with your rod hand, at the same time pull back on the line hooked under your thumb and lift your little finger off the spool. It feels like you're throwing your arms wide apart. As you open your arms, one side of the loop hooked under your thumb will pull line off the reel. The other side of the loop will pull line from the end tackle. This will shorten the line between the rod tip and the tackle. The end tackle will accelerate being pulled by the rod and your free hand pulling the end tackle towards the target. It is important to understand that accelerating the end tackle by pulling back with your free hand plays a big part in getting any distance in the cast. It is this action I feel should be your main thought when practicing the Wallace. Return your free hand back to the rod along the same path allowing the line to run through your fingers as it goes. Do not let go of the line at any time as it will almost certainly wrap itself round the reel. The end tackle will naturally slow as it runs out of energy and drops towards the water. The reel will still be spinning quickly. Touch the spool with your little finger to slow the spool down to match the end tackle. 
As soon as the tackle splashes down, stop the spool completely. It may just be me, but I find I cannot cast as far with the ball bearing reel as I can with a true pin. I can only imagine that this is because the ball bearing reels have heavier spools that take a fraction more effort to spin up, effort which goes into the cast with a true pin. Casting from the side requires room on the bank. In a tight swim, the cast can be adapted to an underarm cast. Underarm cast as you would with a fixed spool reel. Just add the pulling on the line to spin the reel as with the side cast. An underarm cast also works well from a high bank. At the end of each cast, glance down at the reel and make sure there are no tangles. Always chuck and check. Do you need to learn the Wallace cast to use a centre pin? Definitely not. I would hate to think of anyone being put off of a centre pin just because of the Wallace cast. The Wallace allows you to cast a little further than the loop cast, but I find 9 times out of 10 I don't need to cast more than a rod length or two to trot a float down a river, for which the loop cast is sufficient. To quickly reel in, you can of course use the handles, but a quicker way is to bat the reel. Simply swipe the spool and spin it up to retrieve the line. Reels that don't have a line guide are easier to bat. The method of fishing centre pins are most suited to is the control of a float trotting down a river. The speed of a float can be controlled by hand or with the reel's drag. The drag can be adjusted to let line out at a steady pace, which is fine on a stretch of river with a constant steady flow. The second option is to control the speed of the float by hand. This is usually done by holding the rod in a way that allows you to touch the rim of the spool with a finger or your thumb. In a strong flow, when using a heavy float, the floating line will be swept downstream pulling line off the reel. In fact, you may need to slow the release of line with your thumb against the spool. Slow moving waters, or in the summer when the river is at its lowest, there may not be enough force on the float to pull line off the reel. In these conditions you can control the progress of the float by turning the spool by hand. Lightly flick the spool or rotate the spool with a finger to control the pace of the float. And then there are times when a river is more like a still water and no effort is needed. This is one of the advantages of a centre pin. No matter what the conditions, the angler has control of the float. To strike at a bite, it's just a matter of locking the reel with your thumb and striking in the usual manner. One advantage when fishing in running water is you can strike enough to feel whether you've connected, but if you miss, you can just let the float resume its way downstream. Playing a fish without breaking the line or pulling the hook is something you get a feel for. Learning when to give line and when it's safe to pull against the fish is something that takes practice. Expect to lose the odd fish until you get to know the limits of your tackle. Apply pressure to the spool with your finger or thumb to control the fish's run. Or use the palm of your free hand, often called palming, to control the fish. Always keep some pressure on the spool to maintain control. When the fish begins to tire, use the handles to wind the fish into the net. When playing a fish, I find it helps to be conscious of what the rod is doing. You can feel the fish pulling, which gives you a good idea of how powerful, or not, the fish is. I just use my peripheral vision to watch the rod, keeping my main attention on the fish.